This video was brought to you by NordVPN. When the war in Ukraine began, various European leaders rushed to take centre stage. Boris Johnson quickly established himself as one of the most hawkish leaders in Europe, sending copious amounts of arms and even offering to train Ukrainian soldiers in the UK. Macron tried to paint himself as the cerebral diplomat, continuing regular calls with Putin even as Russian troops marched on Kyiv. Schultz revitalised the German army and shut down Nord Stream 2, while Draghi overcame opposition from within his coalition to hold the line on European sanctions and send heavy arms to Kyiv. However, in recent months, domestic political turmoil has hamstrung many of Europe's apparent leaders, and the continent is now staring into a power vacuum at the worst time possible. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at those leaders who have seen their standing fall in recent weeks, who might replace them at the top of European politics, and how the balance of power on the continent might shift in the future. Germany, the UK, France and Italy, the four largest economies in Europe and the only European members of the G7, have all seen leadership crises since the war in Ukraine began. But let's start with Macron in France. France, alongside Germany, has been at the very core of the European project and European integration since the very beginning. Like many of his predecessors, Macron has never been afraid to take a lead in Europe. It was, after all, a joint proposal by Macron and then-German Chancellor Angela Merkel that ultimately created the post-Covid European Recovery Fund. Macron has also established himself as the preeminent big-picture thinker in the EU, consistently advocating for so-called European strategic autonomy and more recently calling for the establishment of a looser European political community to welcome in the likes of Ukraine and the UK. While his re-election earlier this year looked to cement his power as Europe's standard bearer, on March's poor performance in the June parliamentary elections erased Macron's parliamentary majority. And partly thanks to that, like many other European leaders, Macron is now preoccupied with other domestic issues, like rising inflation. Now, while France's year-on-year -year inflation is lower than the European average, largely due to the fact that the French government nationalised their energy company and capped prices at 4%, rising European energy prices and reoccurring outages across France's fleet of nuclear power plants have put the government under increasing pressure. So you get the idea. Macron's lack of parliamentary majority and inflationary struggles within the country have forced him to refocus attention back on domestic matters. Olaf Scholz, the incumbent chancellor of Germany, is in a similar position. When Scholz claimed in February that Germany's foreign policy would be undergoing a, quote, revolution in reaction to Putin's invasion of Ukraine, there was quite a lot of excited chatter about the new, rejuvenated Germany. However, in the month since, Schultz has proven a somewhat reluctant reformer, dragging his heels on issues including arms shipments and sanctions on Russian energy exports. To make matters worse, the looming energy crisis and the SPD's plummeting poll ratings have undermined Schultz's standing and forced him to retreat from the European front lines back towards domestic politics. On to the next country on the list, the UK. As we mentioned at the beginning of the video, Boris Johnson was a conspicuously hawkish supporter of Ukraine and one of the more vocal Putin critics. Now, Johnson's strong stance on Ukraine and his newfound closeness, not just with Ukraine, but also post-Soviet member states more generally, significantly improved Johnson's credibility on the continent, which had been badly affected by Brexit. However, much to Zelensky's disappointment, Johnson was finally forced to resign in July, after months of endless scandals and rapidly deteriorating polling numbers at home. And it's a similar story for Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi. Having been president of the European Central Bank for eight years and widely credited with single-handedly saving the euro, 
Draghi looked well-placed to replace Merkel as Europe's steady hand. But while he responded well to Putin's invasion of Ukraine, successfully cajoling his disparate coalition into supporting sanctions and arm shipments, in July, the Five Star Movement finally withdrew their support from the government, forcing Draghi's resignation. So you're probably seeing the trend here. All of the politicians who were originally leading the European effort against Putin's invasion of Ukraine are now ousted or preoccupied with domestic politics. And this is particularly bad news given that Europe is currently struggling with a looming energy crisis, the political and logistical challenges of the EU's COVID recovery fund, and a war on the continent. Which brings us on to the second part of this video. Who could replace them? Who might fill the European leadership vacuum? Well, the most obvious candidates are the direct successors to Johnson and Draghi, who will likely be Liz Truss and Georgia Maloney. However, while Truss has made it clear that she will at least match Johnson's hawkishness on Ukraine, her testy relations with the EU and stated willingness to tear up the Northern Ireland Protocol, something that even Johnson shied away from, somewhat preclude her from taking a leading role on the continent. Similarly, while Maloney is more pro-Ukraine than many of her Italian counterparts, her controversial politics and relative obscurity mean it's difficult to see her leading Europe anytime soon. So what about Macron and Schultz? Might they return to the fore? Well, while no one can say for certain, as things stand, it does look unlikely. Neither were particularly hawkish on Ukraine in the first place, and the looming energy crisis, which threatens to rekindle the Gilets jaunes protests of 2018 and undermine Germany's export-driven economic model, will likely keep them busy over the next few months. Again, we should say that this isn't a certainty. Macron, for example, might use the economic space afforded to him by France's relatively low inflation rate to return to the forefront of European politics. But it's definitely possible that in the next few months, none of the so-called Big Four will be able to fill Europe's leadership vacuum. And if this were to happen, it would give Europe small and medium-sized states a chance to take the reins. And this might already be happening. On Wednesday, for example, the Polish Prime Minister, whose credibility has been buoyed due to his country's support of Ukraine, suggested that the EU was run by a Franco-German oligarchy and called for institutional reform. Denmark also recently agreed to further arms exports to Ukraine, and they've even said that they partake in the UK's program to train Ukrainian soldiers on British soil. Now, it would be unfair to suggest that these interventions are opportunist posturing. After all, Poland has various long-standing gripes with the EU, and Denmark has always been pretty hawkish on Ukraine. But you can at least see how the current leadership crisis might give these smaller states the chance to take the reins, and possibly see power move around Europe. In fact, when leaders move around Europe, for work or for leisure, I'm looking at you, Boris Johnson, they'll likely find that their apps and services don't work quite like they do at home. So if only President Macron knew about NordVPN. NordVPN is far more than just a VPN which allows you to encrypt your web traffic. It's a full suite of tools to secure your digital life, from blocking malware and preventing malicious ad trackers to helping you set more secure passwords. And there's fun stuff too, because using NordVPN, you can access the internet through other countries, which means that region-locked content is available to you from anywhere. And as they have over 5,400 servers in 59 different countries, there's a lot of choice. So when you're at home, you can stream movies and films that aren't on your streaming services. And when you're away, you can still log in via your country, preventing all of your apps from freaking out and thinking that you're being hacked. So NordVPN really is an all-in-one security solution. And with the fastest connection of any VPN out there, now's the time to get yourself protected. So if you sign up for a two-year subscription using our link, you'll not only get a massive discount, but you'll also benefit from their 30-day free trial to give you some peace of mind while you find out how much you love it. Anyway, thanks for your support, and thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring TLDR.